Crawford here, psychologist, speaker, author of eight books, host of two PBS specials, here again to bring you another tip on how to help you create the life you want. Specifically, how to use my life from the top of the mind philosophy to bring more clarity, confidence, creativity into everything you do. Today I want to talk about the subject of trying to get people to stop doing whatever it is you think they shouldn't be doing. You know, there's a quote that I'm uh, kind of adapting from a person by the name of Pam Leo. She says, you can't make people better by making them feel worse. Now I say adapted from a quote. It was actually, she had a quote about kids. She said, you can't make kids be better by making them feel worse. And of course that's true, but I like to take the philosophy and kind of apply it to almost everybody because in my seminars and in my workshops, people are always telling me how they're trying to get people to stop these negative behaviors. And of course they tell them to stop these negative behaviors and guess what? Folks don't say, thank you for sharing, what a wonderful idea. <laughs> they start defending the very behavior we're trying to get them to change. So what I like to do is show people why that's happening and what they can do about it. So if you have anyone in your life, your family, your organization, where they're doing something that you think would be good for them and good for the family and good for the organization for them to change, I want to give you my best thoughts on how to approach that. It has to do with how the brain processes information. For those of you who follow my life from the top of the mind philosophy, you know that I approach everything in terms of how the brain processes information because that's where it all starts. So if we can influence that process, we can have a tremendous amount of influence over our life and the lives of others. So we got the lower 20% of the brain called the brain stem goes down the back of the neck. That's the fight or flight part of the brain. Upper 80% of the brain is called the neocortex. I call it the top of the mind. This is where we have access to our interpersonal skills, problem solving skills, clarity, confidence, creativity, compassion, etc. Middle part of the brain is called the limbic system and that's actually where it starts because data comes in from our five senses or just kind of pops up as a thought and it is first filtered through this middle brain, the limbic system. Now, the mission of the limbic system is to keep us safe and alive as a species. So it has a tendency to interpret almost anything negative as dangerous and throws us into the part of the brain that's designed to deal with danger. So basically, here's what's happening. When we're trying to correct people by telling them what they're doing wrong or what they shouldn't be doing or why they shouldn't be doing it, trying to make them feel worse in order to be better, their limbic system hears that as a threat and throws them into the defensive brain. They start defending the very behavior we want them to change because they're now in that lower defensive brain. Unfortunately, in the past, that has us becoming more uh, insistent and they become more resistant and we become more insistent and we get caught in a cycle with these folks where really nobody's listening to anybody. I call it banging brain stems. So what we don't want to do is that. We don't want to find ourselves kind of trying to help people by making them feel worse because now what we're doing is we're driving them deeper into their resistant brain. So what I teach is, okay, if you don't want that, what do you want? You actually want to access their best. I have a YouTube video in my YouTube channel called How to Access the uh, Cooperative Brain of Your Child. So that we're not driving them into that resistant brain, we're accessing that cooperative part of them. If it's not a child, if it's someone in your family or organization that's doing something that isn't good for them or good for the family, good for the organization, don't try to tell them to stop doing that. They will feel insulted and will often defend that behavior. Instead, what I encourage you to do is to ask yourself the question, okay, I know who they are in that lower brain. Who are they when they're coming from the upper brain? Who are they at their best? What do they do well? What do they love to do? Number one. And number two, what's important to them? Because if we want to influence people, we've got to be able to connect with the part of them that wants to do the right thing, the part of them that wants to be better, which is that upper 80% of the brain, and we've got to do that through what's important to them. Now, a lot of times we don't really know what's important to them, so it may be a good idea to ask. Sometimes you can go to someone and say, hey, you know, I'm not sure I've done a really good job in the past of understanding what's really important to you in this situation. Would you kind of give me a sense of what that's all about? Now, the good news is they're going to tell you some things. Well, gosh, I was hoping that da 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 or what da da I really want to be seen by the organization, da 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 Or, you know, I was just, you know, my family, I want, to, I want to be respected more, I want to be listened to more. We've got to be able to empathize with that, validate that, so they no longer need to convince us of their right to feel that way, and then do what I call asking a top-of-the-mind or neocortex question. 
This is a question that combines what's important to us or the organization or the family with what's important to them and creates a solution-focused question about the future. So this isn't talking about the problem in the past. This isn't trying to make them better by making them feel worse or even focusing on what they're doing wrong. This is connecting with the best of them, connecting with what's important to them, letting them know we get it, and then moving to that top of the mind question where they're now kind of more cooperative. Now we are talking to them in a way where we're basically co-creating a solution. So I have a model that I call life from the top of the mind that shows us, number one, how do we get to this upper 80% of the brain? Number two, how do we stay there? How do we live there so we don't find ourselves falling down into the brainstem every time we find ourselves dealing with a difficult person or situation? And then how do you get other people to shift from their resistant brain to their receptive brain so they truly hear and understand what you're wanting them to know? If you feel this would be valuable for you or your organization, your church, your school, Feel free to go to my website, BillCrawfordPhD.com, hit the contact button, let me know what you're interested in, love to talk with you about that. In the meantime, each week, I produce one of these videos, try to keep them short, I know everybody's busy. I post them on YouTube and Facebook and iTunes and Twitter and Pinterest and LinkedIn, pretty much everywhere. If you'd like to follow me on any of that social media, you'll find that, or... Every week I do send out one of my favorite quotes along with two or three paragraphs about how to apply that quote to life as well as a link to the video to about 6,000 folks on my quote list. So if you want to receive one of these each week, just go to my website, BillCrawfordPhD.com, hit the subscribe button, put your name, email address in. It's free. Each week you'll receive one of these. Hoping you find these valuable, share them with your friends if you think they would find them valuable as well. And in the meantime, between now and next time, here's to you. Bringing more clarity, confidence, creativity into everything you do. And I look forward to seeing you in the future.